People died when a powerful earthquake rocked Morocco and more than 2,000 more people injured and many of them critically. Those numbers expected to rise once rescuers reach hard hit remote areas. Here's ABC's Tom Sufi Burridge with the latest from Morocco. Panic across Morocco, the most powerful earthquake to hit this country in decades, striking late in the night, killing over a thousand people, injuring many more. The magnitude 6.8 quake sending tremors right across the country, but toppling buildings and walls across a large area south of Marrakesh, that ancient city home to almost a million people and popular with tourists. The room started shaking, there's no other way. We're going backwards and forwards and everything started moving and pictures started moving. Many buildings in the region near the quake's epicentre not designed to withstand earthquakes. A vast search and rescue operation now underway in remote villages in Morocco's Atlas Mountains. Hassan Bouna saying he heard a sound like thunder as things in his house shook. Cameras capturing the moments the quake hit. People on the street running for cover as debris falls all around them. Customers at this restaurant fleeing. Video taken by a Japanese tourist showing the panic in Marrakesh. And in the small town of Moulay Brahim, many buildings were severely damaged. Firefighters working to free people trapped in the rubble. About 40 miles south of Marrakesh, this luxury hotel owned by billionaire Richard Branson was also damaged. Roads leading to some hard-hit remote mountain villages are littered with large boulders, making it difficult for rescuers to get through. The injured being transported to hospitals in the region with the death toll expected to rise. And residents concerned about aftershocks now sleeping outside. Tom Sufi Burridge, ABC News, Marrakesh. Terrible what's happening there. Closer back home, people in Honda woke up to their houses rattling after a sonic boom this morning. The FAA told Hondo police a plane flying in the area broke the sound barrier. Several com commenters on Facebook say it sounded like a tree fell on their roof. There's no word on the type of plane that triggered the sonic boom. No sonic booms out there tonight, but definitely the sound of thunder rattling perhaps your windows as those storms move by. But the good news, we're seeing some rain. Look at that cool temperature. It's about Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Temperatures dropped really quickly here in San Antonio as we've seen rain move through the area. And again, the thing I want to stress uh, is that these storms are more bark than bite, yeah. right? They're producing a lot of lightning and thunder. We just haven't seen lightning and thunder in a while, so it can come as a bit of a shock to the system. Here's a look at where the rain is right now. You can see the heaviest of the rain falling from areas uh, in, on 35, right on that Comal and Guadalupe line. So Shirt, Cibolo, uh, Universal City area, all the way down to Castroville. That's where that meat and potatoes of the rain is right now. This thin green line that you're seeing ahead of the storms is the outflow boundary, the rain cooled air. So we're seeing wind gusts of up to 40, 45 miles per hour around San Antonio. That's enough to knock around some loose patio furniture. So again, it is pretty noisy out there. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the neighborhoods that are seeing some of the heaviest rain at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the lightning so that you can see this a little bit better. You can see areas right around Shirts, JBSA Randolph. That's where the heaviest of the rain is right now. Windcrest, San Antonio International Airport. I'm going to show you a video live from the airport in just a second. It is pouring down there. Torrential rains in some of these areas. Uh, Jefferson High School, Memorial High School area. Again, I'm glad a lot of these uh, high school football games ended uh, so that just in time for this rain to move through so we could avoid some delays. This is moving to the south at about 35 miles per hour. So if we were to put uh, a ETA here, it could be near the Somerset area by about 11. So Southern Bear County by about 11. Uh, as I zoom out a little bit more, you can see that it's starting to really fall apart as uh, it moves to the south. But if it can hold on, it'll be near Pleasanton area by 1130, Floresville area by about 1110 or so. So again, some decent rainfall. And then as we can see, as we look at the rain that's already fallen, this has dropped a quick about 
uh, half an inch to an inch of rain in these areas in the green. So it's going to quickly dump some rain in areas and, and be efficient at producing rain as well. Half an inch to an inch in places. The thing is, it has not rained this much in a while and so there's a lot of litter and things like that clogging the gutters. So if you have to be out and about in the next couple of hours on the road and I'm not sure many of us do, but if you have to please use caution on those roads because again this is moving to the south. We've also got some isolated rain in its wake in Kendall County and in Comal County as well. I'll show you an image here of what I mean about uh, there being issues on the roads. This is a look at 10 at work. You can see the ponding on the roads here, so please be very careful. Also seeing wind gusts out there, pretty gusts. You can actually see as on this camera, the wind is rolling through the airport and it's very, they're experiencing a lot of lightning as well at the airport right now. I'd love to get a quick check on the power outages uh, from CPS if we could. Uh, Courtney, thank you. 102 today for the high. It's not every day that you beat a 130 year old record or tie a 130 year old record. But that's what we did and we got some rain too. So the best of both worlds. As I mentioned, there are some gusty winds at about 45 to 50 miles per hour at times. How many power outages are we seeing right now? 32, that's it. All right, not too bad. But if you do happen to lose power, we are live right now on the KSAT, uh, weather, uh, KSAT app on your phone if you lose power. Otherwise, again, gusty winds uh, as that outflow boundary moves through and temperatures are falling. 75 degrees at the airport, 79 in Bernie. Okay, we have another opportunity for rain tomorrow, but it's going to mainly be a hot day. That's because this heat high has moved off to the west. And as you can see in the upper levels of the winds, showers and storms that develop to the north have the potential to move through San Antonio. So tomorrow morning, waking up at 78, for the most part, it's going to be a quiet day. A lot like today was mainly quiet. 92 at noon and 101 for the high. That'll tie a record. It's after 4 or 5 p.m. that we have another opportunity for isolated rain. As we take a look at our temperatures uh, over the coming days, they're going to come down a little bit more. We're only going to be in the 90s for the week ahead, which is a massive improvement in our forecast, although only isolated rain is possible. Today we were lucky and got some of those isolated showers and storms right over San Antonio, so that's good news for us. Been working hard on this, and I know you're excited to be forecasting rain. Absolutely. We're all excited to be getting it, so thank you. This is great, great news. All right, Mary, let's talk sports. Things turned out okay for the Roadrunners in the end, but nearly a disastrous day for them at the Dome. Yes, it was a close game, but even better, a huge crowd made it out to witness what was a UTSA-Texas State rivalry game. And also coming up, we have plenty of high school football action coming your way. Stay with us. of I-35 drew in the second largest crowd in UTSA history with fans eager to make sense of what both teams did both teams did in week one with the Roadrunners dropping a heartbreaker in Houston and Texas State upsetting Baylor. Spurs Keldon Johnson there to witness two teams that have a ton of respect for each other given the history of both head coaches. Second quarter Rocco Griffin with speed catapults into the end zone for a 20 yard touchdown. Roadrunners up 10 rip. Bobcats answer the call before halftime. Jamil Jader stretches out for six. Nice Copa pose there. Tied at 10. Coming out of halftime, QB Frank Harris tosses a dime to Willie McCoy in the back of the end zone. And that proved to be the game winner. UTSA defeats the Bobcats 20 to 13. Unfortunately, the Roadrunners come out a little banged up. Veterans starting tackle Makai Hart could miss significant time with injury. Meanwhile, Harris sustained a toe injury, but he shouldn't miss any time. These are the wins that you, that you live and die by. Um, the grit that we showed, the toughness that we showed throughout the whole game, the four-minute offense that we performed. Um, we didn't get the ball back to those guys. So this is a credit to the, to the defense and getting the ball to us and, and the offense um, just killing the clock. It's been tough. Because I know we've got a really good football team, and it hasn't played out the way I thought it was going to. Uh, I thought we were going to be really, really good on offense. We're playing better than it looks like. I know we're only scoring 20 and whatever it was last week, but we're executing drives. We're getting first downs against really good people. 
All right, the Trinity Tigers had their home opener tonight looking for their first win of the season as they welcomed Mary Harden Baylor to town. First drive for the Tigers. Tucker Horn going to the air and throwing right at you. Ethan Boyer gets under it for the touchdown. And there was more where that came from later in the quarter. Handoff to legend Grisby and let him work 46 yards to the house as the Tigers take this one 35 to 16. The Incarnate Word football program wreaked havoc in Greeley, Colorado. The Cardinals put up over 600 yards of offense while the defense played lights out. UIW wins 42 to 7. The program's first win with head coach Clint Killow at the helm. UIW improves its record to 1-1. One one. It's safe to say the Madison fans were fired up for their showdown against Churchill. Second quarter. Churchill's Harold Relaford finds a lane and spins in for the touchdown, helping the Chargers take a 14-7 lead. But a few minutes later, the Mavericks would respond. QB Landon Gill keeps it himself and trots in for the TD. This was a back-and-forth battle until the game was delayed for weather. Still going on. All right, it's out in Comalander. We're out at Comalander Stadium. Excuse me, the Lee Volunteers were looking for their first win of the season, hosting a tough Roosevelt Rough Riders squad on the second possession for the Rough Riders. A little fake toss and handoff to Zaylin David Shears, who cuts his way through the defense for a huge game before he's pushed out inside the 10 yard line. That would set up a handoff for Brennan Carroll, who will not be denied as Roosevelt rolls in this one 44 to 7. Undefeated McCollum and Edison collide at Alamo Stadium. The McCollum Cowboys up big as we take a look into the third quarter. Sophomore fullback John Paul Fisher imposes his will on the defense to walk it in. 4-6, the Cowboys stay undefeated with the 62-15 victory. Let's check out some scoreboards. Seventh ranked Brandeis and Marshall square off at Fair Stadium. Brandeis winning 27 to 7 and a matinee kickoff between Sabino and St. Anthony Sabinal, excuse me, St. Anthony Falls 35 to 17. Texas and Alabama grinded out in Tuscaloosa Woo! coming up later in the show. Be sure to stay with us for that. I don't know who won that. I, you might have been hanging out at my <laughs> desk when that happened. All right, Mary, thank you. We'll see you in just a bit. Still to come here on the night beat, a convenience store with a history of low health scores in a Chinese restaurant with a pest problem or in the spotlight behind the kitchen door. Next. We want to show you right now our CPS outages. Uh, we, we mentioned before only 32 outages, which yields a lot more people. We're 65 active outages right now. And if you look at the total customers affected, that is 16,352. So the storm that Sarah has been talking about all evening definitely is affecting the CPS outages map right now. But we will keep you updated on that and obviously hear more from Sarah about where we're seeing the storm move. And remember, you can watch us on your phone, too, if you lost power. But you wouldn't hear me saying that right now. <laughs> Anyways, a convenience store on the northeast side with a history of low scores barely passed their July health inspection. And a Chinese restaurant was given 10 days to hire pest control services after an inspector found live and dead roaches hanging out in their kitchen. Let's go behind the kitchen door. Four ten corner stop located in the 2300 block of Northeast Loop 410 kicks things off with a barely passing 70. It's the third time they've been featured on BKD and this is their lowest score so far. The inspector found eggs being stored in a bucket at room temp. Foods inside the hot hold weren't hot enough. The soda machine nozzles were dirty and there was a mold like buildup inside the ice machine. Employees weren't properly washing their hands and cooks weren't wearing hair restraints. Nine of the violations were corrected during the inspection, but a re-inspection was still required. La Soya's Taqueria, located in the 13,000 block of West Avenue, earned a 77 on their July inspection. They had to toss out food in a fridge that didn't cool properly. An employee was seen handling raw chicken, then using their phone and then touching ready to eat jalapenos without washing their hands. Those jalapenos were discarded. They were also displaying an outdated inspection report. 
Chinese Mexican Grill at 1302 Somerset Road got an 83. Four of their refrigeration units were too warm. The food had to be discarded. They were told not to use the units until they were fixed and approved for use by the health department. Eggs and other raw foods were found stored above veggies and pre-cooked egg rolls. A reinspection was required. Jin Chinese Restaurant on Glen Ridge Drive earned an 84 in a reinspection. Raw chicken and shrimp were too warm. They were told to fix a cooler to make sure it maintained the proper temps. Live and dead roaches were found behind and under cooking equipment in the kitchen. They were given 10 days to hire pest control services and show proof. They also needed to do some cleaning to remove a buildup of grime and grease under the cooking equipment. That's what's going on behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Now to news around America. Nearly 400 officers are now involved in the search for a convicted killer that escaped from a Pennsylvania prison last month. That search for Daniello Cavallon... Cavalcante, rather, is on its 10th day. The increase in officers joining the manhunt comes after a series of spottings over the past week. Cavalcante has been spotted at least three times this week. Surveillance footage of his escape showed him crab walking between two walls to get out of that prison. The prison guard on duty at the time of his escape has been fired. The Supreme Court is once again being asked to make a major ruling on abortion. This time, the request coming from the manufacturer of the widely used abortion drug Mifepristone. The filing asked the justices to reverse a lower court's ruling that would restrict access to that drug. SCOTUS could rule on this long-running dispute next summer, which would put that decision squarely in the middle of election season. Mifepristone remains available for now and is subject to the restrictions the lower courts have said should be imposed. Stick with us. TikTok brain is taking over. What health experts are saying could happen if your child is exposed to too much of the app. TikTok brain. Have you heard of it? It's what some experts in medicine and education are calling a condition where kids who constantly consume content in 15 second bursts can't focus on long form communication. I talked with a local psychiatrist who explains what parents can do about it. It's becoming more common for kids to spend much of their day scrolling, scrolling and scrolling. Never ending bite sized videos that experts say are harming brain function. Some calling it TikTok brain. Some studies have demonstrated that use of social media is associated with changes in the way that the brain functions and responds to social stimuli. UT Health psychiatrist Dr. Barbara Robles Ramamurthy says a lot of it has to do with social media algorithms. They are using scientific information about how our brain works to keep us coming back. And so some of those loops have to do with dopamine, which can be associated with addiction, for example. The issue is real for adults too, but the concern is higher for children whose brains are still developing. It even shows up in brain scans. The way that youth may respond to social cues or even expectations of social interactions. She said parents and teachers can look out for certain signs. If they cannot put their phone down for more than an hour without checking it, right? Or if it's impacting their ability to listen in lecture or if they cannot even have a phone conversation, then that might be a sign that it's time to take a break. She wants to clarify that social media isn't all negative. There are some very special, important aspects that it brings to our lives. And so it's a matter of balancing these out. Robles Ramamurthy tells parents to have ongoing conversations with your kids about how social media can impact their lives. And when attention is an issue, set rules about putting the phone down. She also said adults should reflect about being good examples, see how much we're using our phone, our attention spans, and if we're being present at home. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. To do that story earlier this week. Courtney went to court after that. I did. Apple is expected to unveil some significant changes <laughs> in its next iPhone model. I'm just kidding. The iPhone 15 is rumored to be ditching the current charger in favor of the USB-C charger. Now, this comes after... Uh, the European Union voted to approve a plan that requires smartphones and other devices to support USB-C charging ports by 2024. MacBooks and iPads 
currently support USB-C charging. That new iPhone expected to be unveiled at Tuesday's big Apple event at their headquarters in Cupertino, California. Up that was my that was my RBG outfit. That's why I said you went to court. Yes, exact. Just to make sure. Court went to court. But court not for went real. to I'm court. Just <laughs> Guys, rain. I know. Oh That's my real. goodness. Rain. It's happening. It is amazing. We are seeing showers and storms moving through San Antonio right now. You'll notice at the airport that it's a lot calmer, and that's because this cluster of storms is really starting to move into southern Bear County. So other than a few light showers here and there for North Bear County, your main event is done. And as I've been saying, these storms are more bark than, the, than they are bite. They're creating a lot of lightning and thunder, which is something we haven't seen in a while, and even some gusty winds. So a little bit further on down the line, Floresville, Poth, Poteet, Pleasanton, you have the potential to cash in on some of this rain. But as you can see, it's really starting to fall apart. Now, if you missed out on the rain today, we have another opportunity tomorrow. The big story will be heat tomorrow with a small window for rain in the afternoon. Those details ahead in just a few minutes. We've all found our appropriate places. Yeah, we have. Everything is very happy when things are happening out in the weather world. When raining. there's when there's good rain that doesn't yes. come with severe weather. It's, I mean, it's, what else could we ask for? Honestly, what yeah. more Perfect could you ask here. for? Yeah. Please send in your pictures to KSAC Connected. Love to see how much rain you got, uh, and if you have any cool pictures of lightning or thunder. Uh, well, you wouldn't have any pictures of the thunder, would you? <laughs> it's late, it's late. Okay, but yeah, we are getting plenty of lightning uh, out there, especially in Southern Bear County. You can see uh, that this main complex of th storms has really started to weaken quite a bit as it's moved through Bear County, but it's still plenty loud for areas uh, like uh, Palo Alto College, out toward uh, St. Hedwig, and and areas near to Elmendorf as well. That's where we're seeing some of that uh, heavier rainfall at the moment. But a lot of these lightning strikes have really uh started to go down in number. So these storms are weakening as they move to the south. If they can hold on, they would be in the Floresville area by about 1120, nearer to Pleasanton by about 1130. But that's a big if because these storms have really lost their main source of energy, the sun after sunset. And so they have just really started to fall apart. We, but we've been benefiting from them here in San Antonio. They originated all the way up near San Saba. You can see that there is is an outflow boundary, however, ahead of these storms. So quick gusty winds, even if you do not get rain from Pearsall to Pleasanton to Kennedy, Yorktown and Gonzales, wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour possible. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at where the rain it's uh, the rain is heaviest at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the lightning just so we can declutter the screen. You can see areas and neighborhoods like Lone Oak, Adkins, St. Hedwig getting the heaviest of the rain right now. It's falling down right now in downtown San Antonio and near Mitchell Lake, as well as closer to uh, areas like McDonough. That's where the heaviest of the rain is falling. Let's take a look at rainfall amounts. How does that sound? Okay, let's go ahead and uh, select the 12 hour rainfall totals. There's been some neighborhoods that have got some good rain. Anywhere that you have got uh, the uh, green color here, so near Wetmore, uh, Hollywood Park, Stone Oak, that's a quick half inch to an inch of rain that's fallen in those areas. There are plenty of spots that have missed out too. Sorry, uh, out toward Medina Lake where we have not really seen much rain tonight and even up in the hill country areas like Kerrville and Fredericksburg. We do have an uh, update on the CPS power outages. You can see that 16,500 customers are without power. That's from all of the lightning. Of course, I'm sure CPS uh, is out there quickly trying to fix these issues. We'll keep you posted on that. Here's a look at some of that lightning. Uh, out from earlier. If you have any pictures, make sure to post them on KSAC Connect. Uh, that's on our Weather Authority app and online. Here's a look at out at the airport right now. Again, be careful if you have to drive. There does look like there is a crash there uh, on the highway. The high temperature today was 102. We tied a record of 130 years ago of the high of 102. And just a reminder that it is pretty breezy behind those winds. Winds are uh, behind those storms. Winds are from the north now at about 30 uh, miles per hour, gusting up to 40 at times. Temperatures have fallen at 76 in San Antonio, but 91 in Pleasanton. All right, we're going to continue to see a chance for rain tomorrow too, starting off at 78 degrees. By noon, it's going to be 92. 
Most of the day tomorrow is going to be quiet and simply hot. 101 for the high, but it's in the later part of the afternoon and evening from 5 p.m. till about 9 p.m. that we have a chance for isolated rain, about 30% coverage. Today, the chance was about 30% too. It's just that it fell right over San Antonio. So we were some of the lucky ones in the Alamo City. It'll be interesting to know what neighborhoods get rain tomorrow. And then as we look ahead, I mean, big improvements. Temperatures down into the mid 90s mm -hmm. and a small chance for rain each day. I'll take it. Thank you so much, Sarah. All right, it was a shootout in the fourth quarter, but the Longhorns outlast the Crimson Tide. There will be no rolling of the tide tonight. Yes, and it was the first win over an AP top three team since 1969. How about that? A huge win for 11th ranked Texas. Feature members of the SEC plus the Aggies are in Miami. Great game there as well. We'll take a look at those games and more coming up. The Texas Longhorns took the field to a round of boos from the Alabama fans as expected, but what wasn't expected were plays like this from the Texas offense. Quinn Ewers throwing a bomb to Xavier Worthy for a 44-yard touchdown to take the lead in the second quarter. Third quarter, the Tide said we can do that too. Jalen Milrow finds Jermaine Burton in the same end zone for a 49-yard TD. Then in the fourth, Milrow drops the snap, but somehow still finds Amari Nyblack, who wiggles his way through defenders and gets in to make the three, to make it a three-point game. Then came the game winner from Ewers to A.D. Mitchell as the Longhorns go on to win 34-24. Third ranked Texas A&M taking on Miami. It's a one point game early in the third quarter until the Hurricanes explode for a 98 yard kickoff return for TD to go up eight on the Aggies. A little more than five minutes left in the game down 41 to 26. Connor Wigman hits a Noah Thomas in the back of the end zone. But in the end, Miami is led to victory by a historic Jacoby George performance 48 to 33. 12th ranked Utah steals a win in Waco over Baylor. The Blake Shapen list Bears are 0 2 and are in a six game losing streak dating back to last season. TCU coming off of a high profile loss in week one to Colorado. They pick up a week two win 41 to 6. What a game it was in front of a huge crowd inside of the Alamo Dome between rivals UTSA and Texas State. Let's relive it again. Second quarter, Rocco Griffin with speed catapults into the end zone for a 20-yard touchdown. Roadrunners up 10 rip. Bobcats answer the call before halftime. Jamil Jeter stretches out for six. Cobra pose. Tied at 10, coming out of halftime, QB Frank Harris tosses a dime to Willie McCoy in the back of the end zone, and that proved to be the game winner. UTSA defeats the Bobcats 20 to 13. Both teams are one and one. The AL West leading Houston Astros are trying to get even with the San Diego, San Diego Padres. Fifth inning, Jordan Alvarez doubles, brings in two runs. Astros rally to come out of the inning up three runs and the Astros win this one seven to four. The series finale is tomorrow afternoon. The Texas Rangers hosting the Oakland A's tie game in the seventh inning. Robbie Grossman scores on a wild pitch. That'll be all Texas needed to break a four game losing streak as the Rangers defeat the Athletics three to two. San Antonio FC is at Colorado Springs. Santiago Patino scored in the 70th minute to give SAFC a 1-0 lead. Colorado Springs switchbacks FC ties it up soon after, and this one ended in a 1-1 draw. Now, time for a major shout-out. Coco Goff with the U.S. Uh, Open Championship victory. A uh, huge shout-out to her. Yeah, she's just 19 years old, so she's broken a lot of records. I think the third after 13 from the U.S., her first Grand Slam, so title, so congrats. Bravo. Shout out Coco. <laughs> Woo. We'll be right back. 
All right, rain is pretty much done for northern and central Bear County. Some of the, that rain is pushing south into southern Bear County, Poteet, Floresville, Pleasanton. A few lightning strikes, but these storms are weakening. We'll have another window for rain tomorrow in the afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the Night Beat.